and then if I go up to let's say 70 let's go to let's go to 80,000 oh well let's just do 78,000 it should be gone again 78,000 and it has now disappeared once again all right so now it gets messy with a married couple so let's change it to a married couple now so I'm going to go back on over and say they're married now it's important when doing the data input when married to indicate that this is the spouse right so that you have to have you have to be able to apply it out so the software knows that that they can play apply out the limits based on uh, each individual spouse and these of course are in the order of the first the first one being the taxpayer the first one you enter into the software the taxpayer the second one that you list is going to be the spouse right so that you got to get that straight so that it can do the proper calculation let's say that they both have uh have let's say the second one is fifty thousand, and they neither of them have a retirement plan let's imagine so neither of them have a retirement plan to start with i can then maximize the contribution and i could say well if they're married the max is not six thousand it should be twice that and i'm going to go back on over to page two and i can jump to the data input and say let's say number one for both of them saying maximize for each of them so now it comes up to twelve thousand, of course now the max contribution could increase if they're older than 50 as a general rule so so let's do that let's change the age so i changed the age for just one spouse and now you've got thirteen thousand, which was uh this the six thousand for one and the seven thousand for the other so let's bring it back i'm going to bring it back down to so they both get the six thousand so they're both under 50. and now let's say that one of the spouses let's say the first spouse on their w-2 has a retirement plan so now they've got a retirement plan which would be indicated on the w-2 and so i'm going to go back on over and say now it's been limited to six thousand because it, it basically said, well, the other one, it got removed on the other one, which is kind of what you might expect, right? You'd say, okay, well, if they had access to the 401k, but there's an income threshold. So if I bring the threshold back under like 109,000, I believe. So notice my total income right now is 150. So let's bring it down. Let's bring it down to a, under 109,000. So let's say this is like minus... 40 which will bring it down to to one to so let's check that out so 140 i meant to say 40,000 so i brought it down to 109 is that's what i was trying to do so 109,000 and so now it's at the 12,000 again so it's been basically allowed even though we had the 401k so we have both of them in place if it's between uh 109 and 129 so let's increase it a little bit let's say i, I increase it by like 5,000. so now it's at 114 so if i go back on over now it's it's phasing out one of them right so it's phase it's it's basically phasing out one's spouse is at 6,000, the other's at the 4,500. and then if i go up above above ground i believe 129 then then it'll be removed once again now what if we have a situation let's concentrate on the other spouse and let's say our income for for this spouse that has a retirement plan is quite high 200,000. the second spouse doesn't have the retirement plan but they only made 50,000. So, and they still could be limited in this situation due to the first spouse having such a, uh, a high income. So if I go back on over now, we see as we max out uh, the retirement plans that we don't have anything. So the general rule there is uh, if, if married filing jointly and your spouse has a 401k, you can take the full deduction for your IRA contribution as long as your modified adjusted gross income is less than 204,000. It's got to be less than, you know, the 204,000. So that's that gets a fairly, you know, relatively high threshold, but you can see how those kind of rules start to start to interplay. They get quite complex actually uh when you get into the age limitations, 
all the combinations that you could think of, right? If you've got the age limitation, so usually you'd want to be memorizing that you can have the 6,000. If you're if you're older, over 50, it goes up to 7,000. If you don't have any other 401k or someone else has access to the 401k and wage limits, but if you have access to a 401k, then there's going to be uh, limitations in terms of how much you might be able to deduct. And if married, even if your spouse has uh, access to a 401k that still might limit you know each spouse's access to being able to deduct depending on the income threshold which you would probably be dependent to some degree on the software to help you calculate which you can calculate uh, as a last minute kind of tax planning thing therefore the general strategy would be max out your 401k plans before 2022 has ended because you can't put any more in there for the tax year 2022 or whatever tax year you're talking about until uh, after that date and then we can see if we can maximize any any added amount with the ira and use the software to do that calculation obviously in order to take advantage of any kind of deduction related to an ira or retirement plan you need to have cash flow available to be putting the money into it